five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. This is Alex Bennett, and this is The Ramble. goes from now until midnight, and uh, that's on the east coast of the United States. If you're out in the west coast, it goes until, uh, let's see here, would that be 70? Yeah. Well, it was, you know what time. It goes till 9. Does it go? What time does it go till? I go, it goes till 9 out on the uh, west coast. And if you want me to tell you where it's gonna, what time it's going to be in the Midwest, I can't tell you. I'm not going to even try and figure that out. Hey, it's time for us once again. Uh, to talk to a dear friend of ours. Ladies and gentlemen, his name is Larry Bubbles Brown, or as he's known, Bubs. Do you have any, <laughs> they have any other nicknames for you? <laughs> Loser. <laughs> Loser. <laughs> Get out of the business. <laughs> <laughs> Many nicknames, yes. It's a little too late for you to get out of the business, right? Yeah, there's, I, I said I finally got a retirement uh, plan. I bought a gun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I, I, I saw the uh, funniest. Uh, <laughs> I was watching Seinfeld, the comics and cars, the other day, and they, Seinfeld was talking about a great joke, and they cut to a clip of uh, Dangerfield, one I'd never heard. <laughs> His wife is leaving him, and he said, is there someone else? And she said, there has to be. <laughs> <coughs> oh, boy. Well, He may have been the best, right? Yeah, but Ben is the, is the operative term here. You know, once you're, <laughs> once you're dead, you're not a great comic anymore. No. You know, you may re be remembered as a great comic, but you're not a great comic. Right. You know. Um, but uh, 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 you know, Dangerfield was terrific. I mean, he was—he was. Did you ever have him on the show? Never. Wow. Never interviewed Rodney Dangerfield. That would have been great. He's one of the ones I missed. Part of the reason was, is that when when I was living in New York and doing shows in New York, Dangerfield wasn't a factor. Okay. Uh, and uh, then when I moved to San Francisco, and he was a factor, he never came to San Francisco, so I never had him on. And I, mm -hmm. I don't think I don't think I ever did him on the phone. I you know sometimes I think I didn't interview somebody, and then it turns out I did. And um, so that's you know uh, uh, th that's the name of that tune. Uh, I I just I don't think I ever interviewed Dangerfield, ever. Um, not that I didn't want to, mm -hmm. uh, and not that I think I tried, but we weren't able to to do it or whatever. Uh, you know, he wasn't like the most acquiescent person in that respect. I'm sure I'm sure you know if, if he were more if he were more into doing interviews, I think it's somewhere along the line I would have done him. You know, he would have popped up on my radar. Yeah, yeah. But I don't even think he... I, I, did he ever leave New York, or did he do most of his comedy in New York? He did Vegas. Uh, he did come out here right when I started comedy and did the war field. Yeah. But I think that was the only time he was... The whole time I was doing comedy, I think that was the only time he was ever out here. So did you see him then? No, no, but see, so you know, uh, it was very, uh, very elusive. Yeah, well, some of these comics were elusive, and because they were in New York, uh, they weren't as accessible. You know, in those days, uh, uh, today, all of them are accessible. They travel the whole country. You know, uh, 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 but then those days, sometimes a guy like uh, like um, uh, Se uh, like Seinfeld, like Dangerfield. Would just remain in New York, and that was it, you know. Uh, or he would play Vegas occasionally, but you know, is he going to go play Memphis? I doubt it. 
No, I think uh, Dangerfield pretty much did New York and occasionally Vegas. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, so, uh, and you never met up with him, right? No, no. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I never did either. God, I, when I think of all the comedians that I've done over the years, to even think that I never did do uh, uh, Dangerfield is kind of interesting. Yeah, you would think. Yeah, you would have thought somewhere we would have crossed paths somehow. Or at least a phoner or something, you know. Well, no, I mean, I like, I, you know, in the early days, I had Seinfeld in the studio, you know, because Seinfeld traveled around the country doing his comedy. So, uh, you know, but but I, when people say, did you ever do, um, um, what's his name? Uh, did you ever do uh, uh, Dangerfield? I go, no, I don't think I ever did, you know. And there are very few comics, by the way, that I can say that about. You know, even some of the, what we would say, the more elusive. I mean, you know, Ellen DeGeneres? Yeah, sure, I had her on. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it, 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 it's just that somehow this guy, to begin with, he had a club in New York. So that was his home stage. And I just don't, I don't remember him doing much traveling around. Do you ever remember him coming to San Francisco and playing San Francisco? Yeah, yeah just that one time. That one time, yeah. So you never know, you know. Uh, uh, but uh, he certainly was great, you know. Uh, and so you had Seinfeld. That must have been that was the early years. Uh, uh, no, he had just I think started the TV show. Oh, okay, so he was plugging that. Probably. Yeah, he was plugging that. You know, he. It's funny, you know. People forget that the first two seasons of Seinfeld, I think, were only either like four or six shows, and that was it. I think it was four, yeah. It was four. I know it was four, the first one. And he did like four episodes, and that was it. And uh, they, 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 somehow they figured, ah, let's be, what could hurt? Let's give him another run. And I think maybe the second run was six. And then all of a sudden, I think cheers went off, and they said, what are we going to put in that Thursday slot? And uh, they said, ah, let's give Seinfeld a try. try. The shows have looked pretty good. They've been improving, you know. Yeah, the first ones were pretty awful. Well, they, well, they tested terribly. This, yeah. was, you know, in those days they used to like test shows, and uh, they were they tested um, um, Seinfeld, and uh, his shows tested very badly. So, you know, it, who knows? So, um, uh, well, it would it would have been pulled by off the air if it was had debate debuted now. So. Oh, it give you like two chances. If if you don't make it in the first couple of episodes, they'll they'll pull it off even if you've shot 13 of them. You know, nothing gets a chance anymore. That's why everybody has gone to to uh, cable and to to uh internet and so on because at least uh <clears throat> excuse me, at least uh, uh Netflix will give you 13 or t- 10 or however many they consider as a season for that particular show. Uh, with the networks, uh, uh, what was it? Who, who's our friend, um, um, the guy who lives in Sacramento? And oh, Jack Gallagher. Jack Gallagher. Uh, he got a show, and it was supposed to debut, and they were going to do two debuts. It was going to be, I think, a, a Saturday and a Sunday, or a Sunday and a Monday, and there were going to be two episodes, one each night. And they took out two uh, 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 two page ad in uh, TV Guide, but, you know, where you opened it up and it folded out, and the t- two pages were all Jack Gallagher, right? And the show was supposed to run, I think, that Sunday night. And um, come Sunday morning or something, they decide they're canceling it, and they never ran it. I mean, that's how fast those things happen in those days. Yeah. And what happened was between the time he shot the shows and the time that he was supposed to debut the shows, they fired the old head of comedy at the network and put in a new one. And, of course, that one said, well, I got my own ideas. This isn't funny, you know. Mm -hmm. And Jack Gallagher (laughs) got screwed. Literally screwed. I think they maybe played off what he had done later on in the year somehow, you know, just to get it out of the way and to, to get their money's worth. 
But two whole pages in TV Guide for a show that never went on. Uh, that was terrible. That was just terrible. Uh, yeah, you should have Jack on and talk about that. It's a great story. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, you know, I mean, and, and Jack, I guess he's he's been fairly successful in Sacramento. I think he had like TV shows and. Oh, he's done really yeah. well, and he's done he's done like six one man shows, and uh, he's uh, really. I worked with him a couple months ago. He's so talented, a great guy, a, a nice guy, oh, really, the best. really nice guy. Uh, and uh, we, we, I always felt bad for Jack over that one. You know, that was really getting screwed. Uh, yeah, he would have been huge, I think, if they'd let that thing run. Well, maybe not. But they should have let it run. Hell, you shot yeah. the fucking thing. You took out two page, a fold-out two-page ad in TV Guide. The least you can do is get your money's worth. <laughs> be nice to see it, yeah. Yeah. So I, I just, you know, I, I, it, it, it kind of was amazing uh, that uh, uh, that happened the way it did. And um, if people don't know who Jack Gallagher is, he was on Curb Your Enthusiasm on s several occasions as his, as Larry's doctor. Right. Uh, you know, but that's about it. That's all I've ever seen of... Uh, of uh, of him and uh, it's kind of sad because he was a very good com Jack Gallagher was a was a great comedian uh, still is still is you know but uh, do you ever meet up with him at all or you must play yeah I said we worked a couple of months ago together and he said he'd love to do your show so oh really I should give him a yeah. call I'll get some information from you on him I okay. I really. Uh, I really liked Jack, and, and I really felt he should have had a bigger career. Mm -hmm. You know, um, he he was an influence for a lot of different comics, and uh, and most comics will say Jack Gallagher is one of the best. You know, but just because you're good doesn't mean you make it. I it, it's it's really a luck of the draw. I mean, how many terrible comics do make it? You know? A lot. <laughs> A lot, a lot, a lot. Um, I'm trying to think of some of them. Uh, but uh, we need not name names. But you go, why? You know, And why did they get the break and a guy like Jack Gallagher didn't get the break? I mean, he got the break, but then they stole it from him. So, whatever. Yeah, you know? yeah he had the... Uh when you were hosting Comedy Tonight, he had a set on there that was like one of the strongest sets I've ever seen on TV. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, you know, he was one of these guys, I often said, sometimes you can be too good looking for comedy. And yeah. uh, he kind of was too good looking for comedy. I mean, he really, he's a good looking guy. Uh, and uh, But that's precisely the kind of guy I guess should do, be doing comedy. Because it, he confounds you by being funny and looking so good. Yes, you know? most of us are trolls, so that's yeah. when you get a good-looking comic. Yeah, and, it's and, a and, rarity. And you play on the troll factor. Yeah, that's what, probably why we're comics. But. You, you know, I mean, your, your style of comedy, which is uh, the style of, uh, uh, what can I call it, deprecation? Self-deprecation, Self-deprecation. Yeah. Uh, would not play well with a guy who didn't have a mug like you do. <laughs> Brad Pitt couldn't be self-deprecating. Yeah, yeah. I mean, imagine folks, Brad Pitt trying to do stand-up <laughs> comedy. You know, it, it's just not possible. Um, but Larry Bubbles Brown, on the other hand, has a face made for comedy. We had to be comics. You had no other choice. Yes. You couldn't even be a real estate salesman with that face. No, you know. probably not. Yeah. You want to buy this house? <laughs> <laughs> it's probably got a leaky roof. <laughs> yeah. If you want, if you want to buy it, I won't stand in your way. <laughs> uh, but uh, do you do you feel that? Do you know any really good-looking people who are good comics? Uh, 
I've only heard because I never know what women consider good looking. There's a guy named Gary Goldman that's supposed he's very funny and supposedly he's very good looking. Yeah, but I'm trying to think of a comedian who's really good looking who is incredibly and, funny, and I can't. Who? Huh? Yeah, that would be. Uh, what? Dana Dana's cute. I don't think you would consider him like a leading man. Uh, kind da, of guy, yeah, but. Dana has a uh, impish quality, which yeah. again lends to comedy. You know, uh, but you can't call him handsome. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, uh, uh, can you imagine Robert Redford trying to do stand-up comedy? You know, <laughs> that'd just, be great. <laughs> it, you know, uh, it, you know. I mean, it just wouldn't work. Uh, and you have a face absolutely made for comedy. I mean, I often said that when you were on um, Letterman, uh, I was amazed, okay, with your two Letterman shots, which were 20 years apart. Uh, was, am I right? Is it 20 years? 21. 21 years apart. <laughs> Excuse me. I didn't want to minimize it. Uh, and and the reason he didn't come back the second time is he could have called them like six months later and they would have seen him and put him on, but he never called, right, Bubs? <laughs> I wanted to play hard to get. <laughs> well, no, you wanted to. Uh, you wanted your life to be a failure, is what you wanted, and you were That's working. What I've been told. Yeah. <laughs> working really hard at it. Okay. But anyway, so you you went on the uh, you went on the Letterman show and. I I said, you know, this is the best Bubs has ever been because he fills the whole screen. You know, that I never realized how comedically photogenic you were. Uh, you know, and and what you said and what you did was very, you know, very funny. Uh and um it, it and and part of it was your face and the expressions on your face, which even on a stage don't play as well as they did to that camera. So yeah, I'm, I uh, I mug a little more. Like people never notice it in a club, but on a t- on TV, it, the camera picked it up. And yeah, and when I saw you on Letterman the first time, I went, "He killed." I said, "He just absolutely killed." And I figured after that, you'd be a star, and not even talk to me. <laughs> um, but then he did the second shot on on Letterman, and it was just as good, if not better. And I just said, you know, he's oh, he, he sh- you should have been on TV more than you have been because in close up you really work because your face has that deadpan kind of look to it that's it's fun. Yeah. So. You know, I should have done more TV. You, you should have done more TV. You should have done, you know, how old are you now? Sixty-five, something like that. Sixty-seven. Sixty-seven. Exactly. Yeah. So I mean, really, you should have done more. You know? <laughs> this is the this is the age where you just look back over your life and start regretting everything. Well, you know, I keep thinking like if I had to start all over again. Uh, what would I do differently? And the fact is that if I started over today, let's say there is reincarnation, and let's say I die tomorrow, and then I've got about 20 years till I finally discover that I'm going to be in radio or whatever, uh, uh, could I do it again? And it's just a whole different set of circumstances now. I don't know that I would have made it in radio today. Because there isn't radio, I would have had to have done a podcast, and then you, have, you would have done a podcast and probably done very well. Well, I would have had to be very original. I don't know that I can do a podcast, even though I do one, because I don't have what it takes by today's standards to do a podcast. You know what I'm saying? In, in other words, I'm I'm a little too. Uh, I I I don't know what is needed for a podcast to be successful because all I'm doing as a podcast is basically a radio show and that's not what a podcast is you know and um, how often should you do a podcast I do four a week probably I should only be doing one maybe two a month you know and that's it but but I do this four days a week because that's what you do in radio well, you do five days a week, but I figured I could get away with four, and I'm doing four. 
and I may slow it down to three for all I know. But I don't know that I uh, uh, am podcast friendly, as it were, you know, because I'm doing a radio show. That's it, you know, and I'm also having to deal with the technology, which each and every year starts to vex me more and more, where before I used to be really good at it, you know. But I, you know, I in, in your case, um, uh, I saw there a comic who worked very well on television, and it was just strange that you didn't get more TV. And now you're too old for it, right? Now I'm too old. <laughs> no, really. I mean, they, they, they a guy like uh, some of those late shows. You know, you know. I was thinking about it, and they say, well, you know, if you get older, they don't want you. And I go, well, yeah, I don't know. And then all of a sudden we start thinking about it, and it's really true. Because you think about who's the oldest comic we know that's emer emerged on television, uh, and um, uh, that would be uh, Lewis Black. Lewis is, God, I don't know how old Lewis is, but he's well into his 60s. Well, I think he's older than me. So yeah. Probably between me and you. But how often do you see him lately on television? He just like he he had a big run, and then suddenly I haven't seen him in a couple, three or four years. Yeah, and you know why? It's that whole age thing. Uh, well, you yeah. know, he's really too old to give a special to. You know, we have to give it to and cease on sorry. You know, uh, and yet, Lewis Black's one of the funniest men in the universe. Nobody makes me laugh harder than Lewis Black. Uh, except maybe Larry Bubbles Brown, <laughs> you know, but who knows who he is? So anyway, yeah, <laughs> well, Lewis must have made a lot of money because he was hot for a while. Oh yeah, yeah, selling uh, out big theaters. Do you know he used to? What did he? What did he, used to, he used to book jazz clubs, I think, in the early years. Uh, he did not know he, that he didn't start doing comedy until much later, and he had been. I, who did I? here ran into him because he was booking a club. It wasn't a comedy club. It was like a music club. And uh, so Lewis has been around for a long time, you know, and um, uh, I think, again, one of the best comics alive. And yet, I haven't seen a Lewis Black special lately. Have you? I haven't seen him in so long. It's, that's kind of freaky now that I think about well, it. Well, I, I don't think you'd see him anyway because you don't have cable, right? Uh, that's true. <laughs> am I right? You don't have cable? Yeah, I don't have cable. Really? You just get all your stuff through the antenna? Well, yes, but it has to be. I had to get the digital converter box since they went digital. So. Yeah, yeah, for, but but you still get it. You still get all your signals off the still air. Still get all the free TV, yes. Wow. Man. Wow. Many channels. I get many channels. Who <laughs> who doesn't have cable these days? Larry really? Bubbles Brown, obviously. Uh, my sister has it, and when I go to her house, I just go, God, I wouldn't pay for this. So. Why wouldn't you pay for it? it nothing that I want to see, I don't think. Well, but that the fact that cable exists means there are more opportunities for you to be on TV, and, of course, you don't take that opportunity. So, uh, you know. But they wouldn't even hire you. Like Comedy Central, would that you come into them and say, "I'm 67 years old. I'm oh, the, that was gone I'm the, fun, years I'm the ago, funniest huh? fucking comic alive." And then they will go, uh, "Sorry, uh, we 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 don't go over. They don't go over. I think 40 now." Oh, I know a couple of comics about 38, and they they submitted to the Tonight Show, and uh, they were just a little too old. To them. How you know? Here's what I don't get. Guys, thirty-eight. All right. Now, if you look, some guys who are thirty-eight look like they're thirty-two, and some guys who are thirty-eight look like they're fifty or sixty. All right. You can't tell how old somebody is by looking at them. All right. And so, why that suddenly becomes a factor as soon as they know how old you are is amazing to me. Either in comedy, you're either funny or you're not funny. That's all. And if you're funny, hell, you could be 90, and I still would want to book you on my show. Yeah. Yeah. Ageism is accepted. I know the uh, t writing in TV, that 
30 years ago, they were saying, oh, if you're over 35, you really can't get a job writing in TV. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. It just, uh, it's just amazing. But what the hell? I remember guys that had written for MASH who were actually taking that off their resume because it aged them like 10 years after the show was off the air. <laughs> and yet you wrote for MASH. <laughs> yeah. So. You know. Uh, but, I mean, it just is amazing to me that age has become a factor of whether you're considered to be funny or not. And they think, well, I, I, they just not going to play to a younger audience. To me, a joke is a joke. I don't care. You know, is, is there any age to a joke? You know, maybe take my wife, please. But beyond that, you know, there isn't much ageism. In jo- hey, listen, we've run out of time. It flew by. Want to do this again next week? You got it. Larry, leave us with some happy thoughts. Uh, We'll be alive next week. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. Okay, that's it. There's Larry Bubbles Brown. I hope you enjoyed him. Ta-da. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. Good, good, good. Okay, let me, let me turn my mic up here. I, I, I'm trying to get uh, my, my, all my sound and everything working correctly here. In the last couple of days, there's been a certain problem with it. Uh, but let me see here. First, I've got I to gotta open up uh, Skype. Where, where's Skype? Where is it? Oh, there it is. There it is. Yeah, what happened last night, the problem I was having was it turns out that Skype reinstalled itself or something, and uh, uh, it, it uh, made it so I couldn't uh, bring all my panel up, my citizen panel up, which is now going to be should, be, should work okay. So in other words, folks, it's time now for you to give me a call, uh, and our lines are open. And uh, I'm going to be, oh, look at me, I'm moraying. Look at that. See, that's what they call moraying. Here, let me put this on. And then I won't moray as much. Um, uh, Moraying is when people wear stripes. (laughs) Oh, look, Charlie Wallace is calling. So we'll uh, open up our line there. And uh, I don't know if he was. Uh, oops, oops, and there's Phil Meyer. There's Phil Meyer. I'll add Phil Meyer to the list. Let me also put Charlie in here. Um, let me see here. Let me get Charlie uh, uh, in. Uh, there's Charlie Good Wallace. Chance, okay, there we go. Okay, come on. Charlie, what the fuck? Oh, I, think I see. I was number that, eight that, or something uh, last night. Uh, oh, you were number eight last night. Oh, well, I, you're, you're not tonight. So, here we go. Let me see here. Hey, it, but you're there. number one tonight. <laughs> there, there we go. There oh, we go. There. <laughs> what What is that stupid hat you've got on? Uh, it's uh, covers my head. Uh, it's better than the stupid hat you got on. What do you mean? What's it's, wrong with this you got hat? A, it's a Trump cap that says you're uh, open to the U.S. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. 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 Um, what's the 17 on the side mean? Huh? The 17 on the side, what's that mean? I have, oh, the 2017. Is that the age of the girls you like? So that, was, uh, that was the year oh, that it 2017. was. 2017. 2017. Right. Yeah. It was the year of the know. U.S. Open, Right. Yeah, good. Uh, and um, uh, yeah, everything seems to be working tonight, for uh, which is terrific. Congratulations! Okay, you well, deserve. the show isn't over yet, and t- <laughs> tomorrow I have my big doctor meeting, so I'm all yeah. what, I'm all upset about that. Yeah, yeah. Well, what uh, kinds of things are you going to discuss? What do you think we're going to discuss? My my urology. This is the uh, second opinion urologist. Oh, okay. I didn't. Uh, you know, you go to so many doctors for so many different things. No, I don't. We did. You know, the audience doesn't know. You know, which there, doctor? There only three is, doctors. Is, is what on a given day? There are only three doctors I go to. I go to my. I have. A, I have a, a GP. You know, who's also a cardiologist as well. 
uh, and I have my urologist, and I have a, a, a neurologist for my feet. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. You know. I go to about eight different doctors. You see, I yeah. am, so I'm 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 doing okay here. You know. Well, I I went to the doctor this morning. Yeah. It was my yearly checkup. Yeah. Uh, I told him that I uh, wanted this new drug that Kaiser doesn't offer. Yeah. And uh, he pulled a fill on me. Uh, you know, when I work with my customers, mm -hmm. I'm honest. I would rather not sell them uh, something that I know is not going to give them what they want than to sell it to them and then have to look at them in six months at Safeway and and uh, have them you know look me in the face so you know I'd pass on a customer like that so my doctor today does a similar thing he says you just have to stop eating carbs I don't want to give you more medicine that's going to destroy your pancreas he says just eat don't eat carbs and you know it's it's very difficult because no, no it's you know, not it, it is so fucking simple. It's ridiculous. Phil. Carbs are addictive. It's like cocaine or heroin. No, I yeah. mean yeah, I gave it up. I, I, you know, I take some carbs in. You can't live without carbs. You need them in. That's, your... that's because you're the exceptional Alex Bennett, but I'm the addicted Phil Meyer, and giving up carbs is a little more difficult for me at this stage than it was. What are you? Last what are you gonna? If you if you don't do carbs, what are you gonna be missing? Uh, I'll be missing the the uh, accelerated feeling you get from eating sugar. Now, of course, after you have the sugar, what happens is you go up and then you go down. Yeah. And uh, the down I usually sleep through because uh, when I get those sugar rushes, uh, I, I take a nap because uh, uh, of what happens after I eat sugar. Well, you know, Phil, uh, you know, the, the simplest thing to quit are carbs. Really, uh, of all I, the things, I understand. It's, it's, it's just it, it's easier. Meat all the time is boring, huh? And uh, protein uh, all the time can become boring. You, you can get invented. You can get and invented. You don't with get it. that sugar rush. You can have nuts, certain nuts. You know. Yeah. You can have a lot of things. You know. It's yeah, just. Well, I, it, I I understand. You, you know. I I know what I'm supposed to do, but uh, I was. So what was it? What was this drug you wanted that he wouldn't give you? Uh, it's called Victosa, and what it is, it's like an EpiPen, and once a week you stick yourself with it, and that's all you do. But it's not insulin. Uh, what it does is it gets your body to uh, to use the insulin that you have. But what he said was he would rather me just stop eating carbs, and then I wouldn't need it or the metformin or the glipizide or the miglitol. That's right. Uh, I mean, why? Yeah. Why you've been, uh, you've had uh, diabetes, and yeah. why you refuse to adhere yourself to a diabetic uh, eating plan is beyond me. Well, it, it, you know, I'm uh, on, I'm, I'm on, a, I'm, I'm, I'm on a diabetic plan, and uh, just for the weight loss, and it, uh, it's pretty damn simple. I mean, it's right. the simplest of all the diets you can do. Exactly, but you're home a lot. I'm out, I'm in the car, I'm going places, I, you pass fast food, the, the fast food is addictive, uh, you know, I finally stopped the McDonald's and all of those things, and I pretty much cut out the fast foods, but, uh, you know, you go into In-N-Out Burger, and, uh, and you get yeah. a protein-wrapped burger, and uh, the guy says, Do you, you know, hey, I'm getting a lettuce wrap, he says, you want french fries. Well, yeah, I want French fries, but you know, why would I uh, order a lettuce wrap if you're going to give me French fries? So, you know, it, it, it's it's it, the world is out to make you eat carbs. Yeah. Uh, Charlie knows. Yeah. So well, well, the, the yeah, thing no, is, no, nobody makes doctor, you. Uh, I, I disagree with you. I completely well, disagree with you. I mean, I found that uh, once I get going on a, a low carb diet. It's pretty easy to maintain, and I don't. I, I don't. I, I don't miss anything sweet at all now. Uh, I, I understand. I had lost weight on Atkins uh, about ten years ago. I kept it off for five years, and uh, then it came on like like a like a vengeance, uh, the weight. But mm -hmm. the the thing is, what I'm saying about this doctor is that he was honest with me. 
you know, he said, I'm not going to give you something that's going to wreck your pancreas. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you that if you don't straighten out in 10 or 15 years, you're going to be dead. And, uh, you know, I said, oh, 15 years, that's not so bad. <laughs> but, you know, but, <laughs> but, but, on the, but on the other hand, you know, he was honest with me. He did to me what I do with my customers. And, uh, you know, it's made me realize that this is really what I got to do. Well, well what, do you, what, 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 you're, what you wanted to do is you wanted to take the easy way out. Of course. And, he, does, exactly he, doesn't, and he doesn't want you to take the easy way he doesn't want you to take the easy way out. He wants you to take right. a life uh, change. Changing, uh, right. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I was so adamant about getting this that I was willing to change uh, from Kaiser to another, uh, to a PPO, just so I could get what I wanted. And I went in there today and I said, I want you to write me a script for this thing and assign me a, uh, and I'll buy it outside the system. And... Uh, and basically, he just looked at me and says, you're willing to spend $400 for these drugs, but you're not willing to cut out the carbs. So, uh, and he was right. I mean, the guy was right. You're sitting, yeah. you're, you're, uh, on, you're screen pals right now with somebody I'm sure is on a low-carb diet. Right, uh, Charlie? Because you had diabetic, diabetes. He ate his toes. Uh, I, I really couldn't. Adhere to it until I retire, like Phil said. Once I've got control over my time, then it's easier to do that. Well, I, the thing I found about low carbs is it's an easy diet to maintain even if you're out and about. You just have to just say, you know, you can get yourself a hamburger. Just throw the bun away. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, it, it's simple things like that. Uh, 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 it, you know, uh, you're going to be, you, you, can, you, can, you can stick to it okay. You know, drink water instead of sodas. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, if I'm out and they, uh, you know, I'll take uh, uh, the iced tea and I'll put a, uh, a, a you know, like uh, stevia in it instead of uh, yeah, a sweet, yeah. you know, as a sweetener. I have my coffee here and it's got stevia in it and it's fine, you know. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I just find that. Um, uh, you know what I do now is I've I've modified it a little bit so that I'm yeah. I'm taking in maybe about 30 carbs a day instead of really? 20, you know. But I mean, basically, I have nuts; they're low in carbs, you know. And what do I have for dinner today? I had a steak for dinner, and for for brec for breakfast I had uh, four sausage patties, the, yeah. zero carbs there. And then yeah. you my, see this tissue? Yeah. You see this paper tissue? Yeah. 50 carbs. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like it sometimes. So anyway, yeah. so anyway, if I'm not here tomorrow night, it's because I'm so upset by the, uh, the doctor tomorrow that, you know. What's he going to tell you that's different that the other guy didn't tell you? Uh, what uh, different? Uh, probably just tell me. He, I, well, he may. He the, the the best is he might say, "Don't. We, you, we're not going to let you. We're, you're not going to have a, a, a biopsy yet." Okay. You yeah. Know. We're first. First thing this other doctor should have done was send me back for another uh, PSA test to just make sure that one was accurate. Right. It wasn't a, a false positive. Uh, yeah, or just one which spiked up for whatever reason. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, although they have been going up, but you know, I mean, I'm getting older, and uh, right. Uh, well, I and won't tell you what my PSA was. What? Yeah. What was it? <laughs> what was it? One point one. One point one. Yeah. Wow. But you're how old now, Charlie? Sixty-nine. Yeah. You know what mine was in just two years ago? No. One point seven. So you know, I mean. And it's hot now. In two years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what mine was about two years ago for a short period of time? What? Seventeen. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but I had I had uh, pancreas, not pancreas. I had uh, uh, of uh, what is it? Uh, yeah. of the, with your prostate, once oh, but, an infection. But for your age, uh, Charlie, one point one is about right. Oh yeah. The thing is, a, as you one. as you get older, your your PSA goes up. You know, and it can go up for any number of different reasons. I mean. It could be, you know, who knows why, you know. I mean, I probably have prostate cancer. 
it, there's probably no question about that. At my age, there's a seventy percent chance that I do. It could be just due to the enlarged prostate. Well, no, it, it, it could have to do with the fact that I've got prostate cancer, but it may not be a fast-growing one. And, it, and most of them, 92% of all biopsied uh, uh, prostates uh, are either slow-growing cancers, which are going to present no problem in the lifetime of the person, or none at all, okay? Now, can there, can there be uh, a, a tumor that is benign and oh, yeah. it's not, oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, absolutely. You know, so that could be causing the increased PSA, no, but it's benign. Because he didn't feel anything when he stuck his finger up my ass about six months ago. That doesn't mean anything. Uh, it's the, it's the uh, biopsy. That's no, but that's, no, but that's how, that's how you can, you can feel a tumor. That's why they stick yeah. their finger up your ass. What if it's on the other side of the thing where he can't fit his finger? Uh, well, he probably is able to fit you his know, finger. Otherwise, other, otherwise he's in the. He, otherwise, yeah, it, it, it's a donut, and you could have had it on the dark well, side. I, of I, the I also, I also had a a, a, a sonogram a probe, a transrectal sonogram, which would look mm -hmm. at the whole thing, Jeez. and all he saw was uh, calcium deposits. Did yeah. he see the fetus? No. <laughs> But, you know, I mean, it, it could be any one of a number of things. You know, I mean, the only problem is there's a thing called free PSA, and mine was low, and that's not good. Uh, but, yeah. you know, the fact is that I could have a, a prostate cancer, but a slow-growing one, one you wait and watch. I mean, this doctor may say to me, well, in this case, why don't we just wait and watch? You know, it could be his. That's what they usually do. Yeah. You know, let, let's not uh, immediately go jumping in with both feet. Now, let me. Now I, I went, I'm going for a second opinion. Is he going to give me a, a, a workup? I mean, is he going to take me in and examine me on a. I don't know. My second opinion just, uh, you know, just had a heart to heart with me. Uh, really? You know, uh, you know, you may want uh, a workup and, yeah. and an exam yeah. uh, because you don't trust uh, the, the workup and exam that you received from the first guy. Yeah, right. You know. Right, but in order to give me a second opinion, he might have to examine me. Oh yeah. Huh? Yeah. yeah. I mean, he would bend over. You know, but I mean, <laughs> it, there's a good chance he will will uh, he won't just listen to me. He'll examine me. To, well, you know, he, if he if he gives you what you want, he's going to send you for another PSA uh, blood test. Yeah. Uh, examining wouldn't be a bad idea. And uh, you know, yeah, but part uh, part maybe, of but part, yeah. but part of a second opinion is 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 doing a, a workup, right? I mean, it's doing it's checking me out. Yeah, well, yeah, I would imagine. Although you see, I I went to Kaiser and I got my first opinion mm -hmm. uh, from the guy who did the operation, mm -hmm. and the second opinion was another urologist at Kaiser. Yeah. Uh, so they had the same uh, information available to them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That the first one did, yeah, yeah. but but you're this, going to independent guys. This one doesn't so. have the results of what he saw when he stuck his finger up my ass or the probe. Well, you know. that's good because you don't want him to have any preconceived ideas. Yeah, well, I'm saying that he would then probably he he'll probably check my prostate tomorrow. Just uh, I I don't see why he wouldn't. I mean, yeah. uh, they don't charge more. Yeah, no. I mean, but I'm saying that because I'm going for a second opinion. And I'm also going to tell him I'm coming for a second opinion, but I'm also looking for another. Uh, uh, well, I, I, you know, uh, that puts him in a in a precarious situation. Uh, when you say I'm looking for for someone else, uh, you you might, you, you, I don't know. I I'd kind of keep that one uh, to the close to the vest, and then after no, he gives no, you the no, second no, opinion. No, no, uh, uh, What I'm going to say is I'm looking for a second opinion, but I'm also looking for another doctor as well. You know, that's it. You know, well, how do you, you know, except for the fact that the first doctor's office is filthy, how do you know that he didn't give you good advice and that why would you uh, uh, jump to conclusions because, that you're looking for because, somebody else right bec away? Because I, I just don't feel comfortable with him. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Is that enough? And that's what I'm going to tell you. You don't have to prove it to me. I'm just... Uh, looking from a from a uh, negotiating point of view, you don't want to influence this guy to say something 
that uh, you know you want an honest second opinion without well, any I'm, influence. I'm sure he will give me an honest second opinion. I'm not worried about that. But I'm saying if he's going to give me a second opinion, isn't he going to do a little physical workup on me to see well, if, if he finds you, anything? You, you would hope so. And if yeah. you like his manner, yeah. you know, you really haven't had any experience with this guy other than the hope. Yeah, uh, that uh, it's going to be yeah. what you want it to be. Yeah, but what all, all I'm saying is, if I'm going for if I'm going for a second opinion, this isn't just sitting around talking. He might have to. He, 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 there's a certain workup he w might have to do, right? I would think so. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah. I mean, if somebody comes to me with a with a with a bid and mm -hmm. says, "Can you beat this?" Mm -hmm. I'd want to measure and go out to their home and see what they're doing and, and at least know that it's the right product for their needs. I would imagine the doctor would be a Charlotte, uh, Charlotte he'd, be a, uh, he'd be a bum if yeah. he didn't uh, right. you know, do his own uh, uh, exam. Jeff, when a doctor, go, when you go into a doctor for a second opinion, he does a certain amount of checking up on you, right? He does a certain, uh, huh? He might do it just uh, right at that time. Yeah, but I'm saying you, that he... By interviewing you, that might be the start thing. It, yeah. yeah. But then then he would also, as part of trying to figure out whether, you know, to give me a second opinion, he might uh, give me a physical checkup. Oh, of course. That's huh? Important. In other words, I can expect he will physically look me over a little bit tomorrow. Yeah. Right. right? You, you see, when I had the second opinion, I had already had actually three biopsies. I had one in 2010, which was negative, mm -hmm. uh, and I had two, uh, uh, like in 2016 or a seven, 16 or 17. Yeah. So, and they were both positive. Yeah, but so, the only question I'm asking, I, you know, I don't, I don't need that. Uh, the question I'm asking is, I'm going in on the basis that I'm going for a second opinion, and as part of the second opinion, is he going to give me a physical workup? while I'm there. And you say he will, Jeff, right? He will, but he may not do it on that, during that day. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Why don't you, uh, can he you may ask the guy? To just understand what your requirements are, what you right. want, what your history is. Uh, yeah, but I mean, if, 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 if one of the things he would have to do to check and see whether I have a problem is to you know, do a rectal examination. For instance, so I mean, it's a pretty common thing to do. Yeah, what I'm saying is, if I'm going into him and I say I'm coming here for a second opinion, he would probably do that, right? I would think so. Oh, okay. All right. I just I'm wondering. Okay. What do you think, uh, Kevin? Will, will is that part of a second opinion? Of, is giving you a, a certain amount of medical workup to see if there are any indicators and things like that? Probably, and he'd probably have you piss in the cup. Yeah. And then, uh, good possibility he'd have you bend over after talking to you for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And Another then way. probably run a PSA. Yeah. Bend over. <laughs> yeah. In other words, <laughs> just, just because I'm I'm asking for a second opinion doesn't mean he's not going to do a workup on me to see if what his opinion is going to be. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. But. but have you already sent him uh, documents about what position you you are presently? No, but I'm bringing I'm bringing all my PSA reports with me. Okay. Yeah. Have you as have you had a blood test done recently? Yes, about a month ago. Does he have a content to that? I have a copy of it with me. Okay. That I'm taking with me. So he may he may want to do one just to. Well, yeah, I will well, use yours as a baseline. My and thinking, maybe do my, one see, for here's what worries me about my doctor. So I get this PSA, and it's about two points higher than the old one was. But don't you say, well, let's take another blood test first to make sure that this is right, okay? Uh, don't they, they wait a little while before they take or, another, or, PSA, or, or, another blood or, test? Or wait another six, yeah. six months or whatever. Let's, you know, to suddenly say we're going to, to begin with, at my age, I shouldn't be getting PSA tests. Well, you were complicit in this uh, well, desire I mean, to have it. I, yeah, well, I didn't know. I mean, my doctor, my regular doctor, my regular physician, whenever he sent out my blood work done, it was just part of the blood work. Now I've told him, don't ask for a PSA. Okay. He says, okay, I won't. 
Uh, but um, this doctor kept sending me and sending me and sending me. And one time I said to him, I said, um, well, you know, I've heard that after the age of 75, you shouldn't even get PSA tests. He says, oh, no, I had a, I had a guy who was 87, and I had him get PSA tests. And lucky we did, because we found a, a bad cancer going there, and I saved his life. And I'm going. You mean he would have died at 103? You know, he's scaring me into taking P PSA tests. Uh, well, that, that's a question you ask him. You know, ask him about what. You know, is the is the is the age is it age appropriate? That's what you ask. Ask him. him. Ask him what he believes about PSAs. Correct. Well, I mean, uh, you, you know, I got to tell you, I've I've heard from uh, uh, two different. Um, let's see here, two different doctors. Okay, uh, beside uh, beside uh, two different doctors. One was my personal physician, who told me, "Hello, Patrick, how are you?" Who told me that? There we go. Um, uh, who told me that um, uh, he said I wouldn't even worry about it. He said I, you know, these PSA tests are, you know, hinky at best, and he was the one that didn't feel comfortable with what my doctor, you know, had uh, had said to me. You know what this urologist had proposed, and uh, so he s sent me to this new doctor, saying he's a little more conservative and he's, you know. He may not be as, as ready to do it, he, but he felt uncomfortable with the results. And then my friend Shecky was at his cardiologist, and he happened to mention my situation, and the guy said, ah, don't even worry about it. He said, uh, it's just, you know. So uh, it's been in the news that PSA tests have been off and on not, not as reliable, and th th that's true. Yeah. And, and my doctor is not worried at two points at all. Uh, uh, I he, tell him two points is ah, don't worry about that. I mean, if it goes six up six points, it, he's not worried about. It, it, he's and, not, and especially at a six point something for a seventy nine year old. I yeah. mean, yeah, that's uh, oh, sixty two you know. and six points was nothing. Oh, six points. You had six points. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, and he he didn't say we're off. He to said no. Come back in six months and we'll try it again. Uh, yeah. Kevin, was that before they took out your prostate or after? <laughs> <laughs> I still got it. <laughs> yeah. That's with meds. Well, you know, we, we, we don't know. And I may, I may have prostate cancer, but, it, you know, in, in most cases, if you have prostate cancer uh, today, uh, they mm -hmm. have lots of ways of solving it. Uh, radiation is one of them. The hormone shots is another, which is not something I would particularly want to go for. Uh, well, you can do what Phil did. Phil just said, I'm sick of this shit. Yank it out. <laughs> this you know? Well, I, I was worried about the spread uh, you know, the, the tumor hadn't burst. And if it did, it, it goes usually to the bone. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I said to myself, uh, I, didn't, I didn't really realize how much I would be affected, uh, you know, between the ED and the urination issues and, and all of those things. I, I kind of didn't realize the gravity of what I did. Uh, if I had it to do all over again, I might have waited a little bit and possibly uh, looked into the chemo, like um, uh, what, what's his name from uh, from well, Kentucky. Well, uh, well, did they did or, they did they offer but you? You had a diagnosed tumor, though, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the, that's a different situation. Yeah, Alex and, isn't even there yet. I, I, was, I, I, uh, my, so the, far, so far, my doctor never felt a tumor. Okay. Yeah, and so you, you're, well, you're not it, even there yet. Now the uh, the my. Uh, test showed that it was a three four on the Gleason scale, which is a three four high, on the it's, no it's wait a minute wait a minute that high. Oh, oh three and a four which is a seven three three four yeah yeah uh, after they did the uh, prostatectomy they biopsied the prostate and it turns out that it was really a four four which is pretty high and 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 yeah. uh, so I made the right decision uh, getting well, it, not, not know, necessarily getting it you could have gone for radiation. I could have, but the guy told me it was going to be 50 or 55 treatments. And I, and I said, I'm not, you know, I've seen people that are getting chemo, and uh, I'm not willing to go through that. And uh, well, It's not you know, chemo. We're not, talk we're not talking chemo. We're talking radiation. Well, what is radiation? Yeah, that's not chemo. Chemo is uh, chemical. Chemical, 
chemical oh. in your body. Chemo uh, radiation is just a zap to your balls, well, basically. You know. Yeah, and, oh. and 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 you go uh, five days a week for like about uh, f uh, six weeks, and uh, after that, uh, supposedly you're okay. Either that, or there's another one where they put seeds in your prostate. Uh, well, my prostate. If you're, uh, if uh, the size of my prostate was 135, uh, how do they measure it? Is it milligrams? Uh, and uh, if it's larger than 60, they couldn't use the seeds. So mine was like tw uh, almost twice, over twice, what uh, the size that they could have used seeds. Yeah. So okay. between okay. the okay. extremely but, large yeah. prostate and the cancer well, i just said get well, rid of it well they found they found a tumor in there which is you know is a different story That's, too yeah but anyway yeah. you know i'm sure people are bored with this but that's all i can think about all day you know i, I you can be when it's over tomorrow what uh, it will It'll be, be over happy. it's all over well, you watch the doctor's gonna do he'll say well keep an eye on it and i guarantee you yeah. it'll be good well i mean my other doctor wanted to go straight to biopsy but you know uh, the, fun, the part is that a biopsy is about $3,000, so that's easy money in his pocket, you know? And at my age, I mean, I talked to Sloan Kettering, which is a major cancer, mom, cancer hospital here, and uh, they said they don't give no. biopsies to anybody over the age of 75, you know? So, I mean, what's this doctor? You know, I just don't want to rush into something. If this doctor says, yeah, you really you should have a biopsy, then I'll say, okay, well, I don't want to use the other doctor. You do it, because uh, I, I don't know if you've ever been to his office, but it looks like I'd be getting a back alley abortion, you know. Uh, well, I have, a, I have a friend that uh, had an enlarged prostate. His PSA went up, mm -hmm. and they, uh, they, he went to UCSF, which gave them very good treatment. They did the uh, the thing where they put the probe up your ass and they get an MRI of your uh, of your prostate. And then they uh, during the biopsy, yeah. they then overlay that with the um, uh, sonogram mm -hmm. so that they can actually look at it like a three hundred and sixty degree view, uh, 3D view of your prostate. That's and right. they can really zero in on the areas that they believe have the uh, the tumor or whatever bits of cancer there are. Once they did his uh, biopsy, it came back uh, it came back benign. Yeah. So and uh, you know he was scared. I mean he was going through the same thing, and he was seventy two. I said to and, my doctor, "Do you think it's going to come back benign?" And he just kind of went, "Eh," you know. And I'm well, going, "This guy really wants to do this." You know, I, I, it, it was, it was, uh, you know, and he made the appointment really fast. <laughs> you know, I, I was, I was out the door with an appointment, which I then canceled. Uh, you know, I, I'm just hoping this doctor is a little more conservative and says, let's take a wait see attitude, which is, you know. Well, this is the guy that was recommended by your your other doctor, right? Yeah, yeah. But my other doctor also recommended the current urologist I'm seeing. So well, maybe maybe he was the current urologist was fine up until a point. Well, it, for me, he up to a point I didn't mind him because there was nothing. I don't no, want to say don't. life threatening, right. but there was nothing really serious to consider. But an, uh, having him, do, you know, to begin with, if he did it, let's say we found cancer, which is a good possibility. Okay. Some doctors would say, okay, well, now we'll take a wait-and-see attitude. A year from now, we'll do another biopsy just to make sure things aren't worse, and we're going to keep giving you PSAs. We're going to keep an eye on it, all right, because yeah. you only have a Gleason score of, say, a 6. Uh, if I had a Gleason score of 6 with this guy, he'd probably be shooting me up with the hormones immediately. Well, the you Gleason know. score of a 2-2, two, two, they said they don't even uh, There's no assess such it thing. as cancer. There's no such thing. No, there is a 2 uh, a, a, a two on the I heard that the, the is, lowest you can get is a six, total of six. Well, this is a total of four, and they say it's not, that would not have been uh, when they listed me with the three, three. Yeah, yeah. And they said, okay, you know, you've got, uh, and, and they biopsied it, and they said it's, uh, you know, it's cancerous. Uh, they said that's cancer. If it would have come back as a two, two, 
then uh, they said that, yeah, well, that the people the been... people don't know what we're talking about and it you know it, it's like you've got all these different scores you got your PSA you got your free PSA Gleason. you've got your Gleason score you know well it's um, it's the Gleason that I guess they uh, what they, I uh, what I am upset by and folks if I'm talking about it again and we're losing audience talking about this and so fuck you if you don't want to hear me talk about it because I have I have to get it off my chest. But the thing is that what bothers me, the, what, yeah, what bothers yeah, yeah. me, what bothers, you got to take it out of your What ass, bothers me is <laughs> that for the last three years, or two and a half, three years, every six months I've had to get a prostate, exam, you know, a PSA, and every time before the PSA, three months before the PSA, I started worrying about it. And I'm tired of living like this. You know, I'm tired of living in this fear of these tests that happen all the time. And that's why they don't give them after 75. Because they say if you get it, you're probably not going to die of that. You're probably going to die of something else first. And I'm sick and tired of this. And if I find at all that I'm lucky enough that this isn't anything more than, you know, a bump, uh, a, 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 a bump in the road, then damn it, uh, I am going to. Um, uh, 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 I, I'm, I'm just. Uh, I'm. I'm through with it. You know, I'm through with the whole mess. Uh, and uh, I. I just. You know. I mean. I just. I, I don't want it. You know. It's. It's. It's just. I don't know. It makes me. It makes me crazy. And I don't know what to say. I'm trying to get somebody on here. Hold on a second. There we go. All righty. And uh, push eight. And there we go. There, there's, uh, there's Ray Renati as well. How do you do? So, you know, so, I mean, um, the fact of the matter is that I'm sick and tired of living in fear of this thing. And uh, I e either want to resolve one way or the other. If I've got cancer and then they want to do just watch it, fine. If they want to zap it with radiation, fine, you know. Uh, but let's just get it over and done with. But I'm sick and tired of every six months having to worry about a fucking test coming in and wondering what the numbers are going to be and have this guy go, well, come see me and take another blood, blood test in six months and we'll look at it again, you know. And by the way, you know, I came out with a 6.7. I could go in tomorrow, get another blood test, and be down in the fives or the fours. You know, uh, six seven. That sounds like my A1C score. <laughs> yeah. And who was it here? Who was I talking to? Oh yeah, it was Kevin said he had a six, and his doctor went, eh, nothing. You know. Uh, yeah. you know it's it's high for his age, but it's not that high. Yeah. Mine uh -huh. is just a little bit higher than for my age, six five yeah. for my age. But, you know, I mean, I just, I, I don't want to live like this. I'm sick and tired of living like this and living with this fear. Uh, uh, more of the unknown than anything else, yeah. you know. If, if suddenly they went, oh, listen, I just found a lump there. You got some kind of cancer. We got to check that. Then I'd go fine. But that's not what, I'm, what they're saying. They're saying we've got to do a prostate exam to see if there's anything. Yes, Jeff. If, if, uh you had your meeting, and, and this the go result. On. What? If the result was that you said, well, here's what we did. It looks about you're okay. How about we get to see you again in a year? Yeah. Would that would I be make happy? I'd be comfortable. Oh, I feel. Or would you still be. No, I I'd feel very comfortable. The only thing that would make him comfortable is a clean bill of health. Yeah. And then he might not be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what happens? Here, here, no, here, here's, the, here's, the, here's the terrible part about this. Okay? Um, let's say I get a biopsy. And let's say it comes out that I, they can't find any cancer. They didn't find any cancer cells. If they don't find any cancer cells, they can't do a Gleason score, okay? Right. So mm -hmm. let's say they don't find any cancer. Now, that doesn't mean that it isn't there. Mm -hmm. So they yeah. say, okay, in, in, in a year, we'll give you another biopsy. What are you going to do? Go have biopsies for the rest no, of your fucking life? The only life? time they might give you another biopsy is if your PSA went up again uh, significantly, and at that point, they might have said maybe we would have missed something 
and uh, we'll give you another biopsy. I don't think they just give you another biopsy uh, without your uh, PSA going up uh, significantly again. It, no, no, they, Alex, they, they do. That's, what I, that's what? what I was telling you in that letter. I, that's what happened to me. What? That they it went up once, and then it went down, and it went up again two years later, and they did two biopsies on me. Oh, on your prostate? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know you had the prostate biopsy. Yeah, that's what I told you in that in that, no, in that yeah. note that I sent yeah, you. Yeah. That it happened a second time. And they so did I had and, to have a second biopsy two years later. And they didn't find cancer either time. Correct. Well, correct. So you had to go through a biopsy twice. Yeah, which is a pain in the ass, literally. Yeah. Literally. Well, ten minutes. you didn't have them put you out? Ten minutes. No, I rode through the whole both of them. Mm. Wow. Because because if you ask me, yeah, to put, I was I was there was some words coming out of that out of that office. I'll tell you. Uh, 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 well, wait a minute. Yeah, I was I was I was I was thanking the Lord. Yeah. But supposedly, <laughs> if if you ask them, they can for, put, for yeah. nurses. I was there. Yeah, yeah. Then they tell you, oh, don't have sex afterwards. Oh, are you kidding me? Phil, <laughs> pee in blood for a month. Fist. Come here. I told the nurse, come here. Get on your knees. Oh, well, uh, you know, here's the thing. Um, uh, the um, uh, you can be put out. You can ask for, you know, to be. Yeah, he'd rather not. But you know, what do you they, mean? They what do you mean? You up, but it's like what, what do you mean? Time you still go under, it's dangerous. It's bullshit. Yeah. You know. I want. Yeah, fuck that. Well, it's about I, a half hour of torture. Yeah, well, I would ask to be this guy if he would put me out because I, I yeah, just don't. I don't want to be just, awake. You know, yeah. if a hammer, if it's not too personal yeah. for your for your whole life if you've been pretty you've been pretty healthy your whole life yeah. I imagine. yeah yeah so that's what that's what's weird about this for you it, it's it's unusual you know there's if you've had a lot of weird shit going on in your life you get numb to it after a while and you can see patrick right there he's yeah he's looking at it. i've gone through it and your first time you go through it you go crazy but once you know You've gone through it a few times. You kind of, you, you deal with it. It is what it is. And I hate that saying. Yeah. But that's exactly what it is. Yeah. And you, you got to roll with the punches. You're yeah. going through it for the first time. And once you get through it, you'll be fine. Yeah. You know, sometimes you just got to say, I got dealt these cards and I'll deal with it. Exactly. Exactly. And, and you'll be fine. I'm sure that it, this is not what's going to kill me. I no, bet whatever you whatever that. happens, you'll be fine. Get, My wife's going to kill me, but this is <laughs> exactly that's what you got to worry about right there. Yeah, but 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 I I I really would I would like to uh, be uh, be put out. And if this guy can't put me out, I'm going to say, well, can you point me in the general direction of somebody who can? You know? Yeah, that puts you out if he has to do it. I can't see. I, I think so. Yeah, they I'm, just, I'm sure that they could they could work something. Not, you know, the, well, this guy, this guy, my other doctor was willing does it that way. And what he does, he has a guy that comes in with the juice and 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 does the uh, procedure. You know, yeah, you they do the procedure at a clinic. You know, your your beef with the first guy is that his place is filthy. Well, I, most doctors do this in their office. Was yours in an office, Kevin? Yeah, it was in his office, but it was yeah. clean. Yeah. Mine was in the at Kaiser Hospital, you know, yeah. they, they, they in an operating room. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I can ask this guy to just, you know, to do to put me out, and he might might send me over to Mount Sinai to do it, you know. But uh, I'm sure if I ask to be put out, he'll. he'll you know what he'll... else was the problem? My vasectomy was a waste of time. Now. Never. <laughs> 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 It never got put to use, huh? It, it, well, it, it did, yeah. but, oh, okay. uh, you know, it's, it's you could have like, done this I don't need it anymore. Same thing, yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, right, 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 yeah. yeah. God yeah. damn, that sucks. Yeah. People you should get money back. Yeah. yeah. You should get a partial but, refund. Well, let, 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 let's quit. Let's the, quit. The worst part was when the good-looking nurse came in and wanted to shave my hair on, on, uh, under the balls, <laughs> you know, and uh, I was a little embarrassed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, so I, I you know, I'm I'm all worried about it and i probably shouldn't be and it probably this doctor this you know i don't know what this doctor is going to say he could just come up with an entirely different take on it like well, let's wait and see you know so. you know what else uh, if you worry about stuff that hasn't happened yet uh, -huh. uh it's a waste of time well you know why i do because i'm a control because you know what i hate about all of this for me personally is that uh 
I don't have any control. Oh, I forgot to turn on the light. Uh, I don't have. What happened to the light thing? Oh, I oh yeah, I was going to tell you, your on air light wasn't on. Oh, oh. yeah. Here, here. Of course you've got control. There we go. No, no, is that I don't have control over the situation. How, how do you not have control? If I have, if I have. Right I, now, it, you don't have the data to make a decision. And once you do have the data, then you have the control as to yeah, what you're going to do. I guess. We'll see. We'll see what happens, you know. Anyway, let's forget about this. And let's move on to other stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, is there anything else happening in the world that... Yeah, besides my prostate. Uh, so I may be here tomorrow night, and I may not be. If it's bad news, then I'm, you know, I, I won't be able to do a show. But I... They I what? They knocked my mother out. I asked her for the biopsy. For her? She's in the bed. What kind of biopsy? That's just though? because they wanted her to stop what, talking. What biopsy did you have? The colon. It was a colon, yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they'll do that for a colon. They knocked her out, oh, yeah. thank God. Yeah. I think, they'll, 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 I, I, I think I think they'll knock me out if I want to be they'll knocked out. Yeah. You know. Uh, no, you weren't. Please. Yeah. They would never been employed. Have you heard the uh, the Vote Republican song by the Deplorable Choir? No. Oh, God, you got to hear that. Yeah. It's incredible. Is that the one that hit number one in the country music chart? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I heard I it. Like it was it, done Phil. by the, some Fox News anchors. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, they had they were on the show on Fox. Yeah. Yeah. The Deplorable Choir. And, and what are they singing? <clears throat> they they sing a, a a song praising Trump, and they're like three milfs. Uh, yeah. 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 And and Greg uh, Greg Gutfield or uh, I think he's on it. Uh, uh, well, yeah. You know, I I don't know. No, yeah, he's on it. Oh, I don't know who he is. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. And uh, that's I th not surprising. Yeah, who else? There was uh, somebody else on it that. Uh, uh, it's from the guys on that the Greg Gutfield show. Oh, okay. Yeah. I I didn't know they were attached to anything. Yeah. Okay. I thought well, they were if you'd on watch Fox own. News, then you'd know. Well, <laughs> I, I, I watched. Well, uh, yes, uh, Patrick. Patrick. That's a different thing, Phil. Yeah, oh, that's it, it wasn't the one that hit number one in the country music chart? The one that did that, it was called Shut Up About Power. That's it, that's oh, it. Oh, no, that's yeah. a different yeah. one. No, this is, these are three women. They do sing a country song, but they're yeah. called the Deplorable Choir. It's just oh. three women. They had three uh, okay. hot yeah, looking sh uh, uh, 30s or 40s songs. Yeah. Uh, different song. Okay. All right. Yeah. 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 So. You know, all you sad guys. I'm getting, uh, I'm going in, uh, my friend's getting me uh, membership in the uh, uh, country uh, CMA, uh, country music uh, 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 deal. I don't know, he's getting me the, uh, he's got the application for me, and he's signing me up because I'm going to be photographing uh, for six country music radio stations uh, going to different country music concerts. Huh. And uh, so they can use it on the website, and the, and the country stations can use it. Two of them are in California, and I don't know their call letters yet. That doesn't but, mean you can uh, join the CMA, though. Yeah, they want me in the CMA because uh, the guy who's behind it wants to use my vote. <laughs> so, but, 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 like, what have you done to qualify to get into the CMA? All you have to do is pay. And, uh, oh, and, have somebody, oh, and you have somebody nominate. Well, then, yeah, the guy's uh, not. Well, then uh, that, that, that's bullshit. You know. yeah, well, that's well. not a real union. That's just like an association. No, it's not a union. It's yeah. just uh, you know. They, it's an association. The, yeah, they vote yeah. on the award. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, CMA awards, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So, and so, what do you know about country music? I know absolutely nothing. Okay. But I know how to take. So pictures. how dare you vote? Well, I'm not going <laughs> to vote. Some the, the guy who's paying for the thing is going to do the voting. <laughs> so it, the fix is in. Really? really. Check his license. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I know nothing about country music. I, I, don't, I couldn't tell you a country music song or a country, a country music singer if my life depended on it. Uh, Taylor somebody. But, uh, you know. She doesn't even sing country anymore. No? Okay. Oh, well, yeah. I, I don't know who, who is. Uh, I've been, I've, you know, Charlie Daniels. You know? <laughs> ah, he's dead. <laughs> Do you know him? He's dead. Who? He's dead. Yeah. He doesn't he know Rhinestone Cowboy? Would he even know that song? No, that's uh, that's I've heard Rhinestone Cowboy. But that's Glenn Campbell. He's dead Glenn too. Campbell. Johnny Cash is dead. That I know. 
Yeah. 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 Well, you know, Willie Nelson. Brooks. Willie Nelson. He. He's yeah. a Democrat, but yeah. I guess I just bought yeah. tickets to Willie Nelson concert. It's going to be in Stanford in October at Frost yeah. Amphitheater. Yeah. And the tickets were so much cheaper than they usually are, probably because it's at a, co a college. Oh, well, I should find out if that's one of the ones they want me to shoot. Oh, yeah, because I'll be there, man. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I think the man. deal is I'm supposed to get backstage access and, you know, full full access with this uh, type of thing. Yeah, you could smoke you a doobie with them. I Who's, your doubt friend? That. Who's your friend, man? Who's your uh, friend? He's a he's a uh, consultant and he a PD, a, a program director, oh, and okay. he he uh, he's doing um, uh, six stations right now. But he uh, for 16 years when Disney owned uh, uh, four stations in the Detroit area, he was the PD for them. And, oh, cool. Right you know, most guys don't last 16 years in the radio business in one job. Oh, I know. But, yeah. Okay. Well, well, that was one thing. Well, that's yeah, fair. but yeah. he said country music was uh, had more longevity than top forty. Yeah. Well, it does. Yeah. yeah. Wow. The country music huge in this country, even in Mountain View over here. Yeah. Whenever there's a big country person singing, yeah, sells out. Traffic for days. Yep. Well, yeah. I mean, that, that, that mean, but, but, you know, I mean, wait a minute. But the, he uses the term top forty. That's an old-fashioned term. Yeah. It doesn't even apply. Guy. No, it doesn't apply today. There is no top 40. I mean, there are uh, the top 40 selling records, but usually they're in all different categories now. Yeah. And, you know, so there's the country chart and there's the uh, uh, rap, you know, the hip hop uh, rap sh uh, uh, chart. Yeah, there's the does country. Does Billboard chart. have different charts for each one of these? Yes, or? absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. but you know, it used to be you used to have the top forty, and it, it, there was country in there, and there was Sinatra, oh. and there was uh, you know rock and roll, and the Rolling Stones, and you know it was just a whole conglomeration. But that really doesn't exist anymore. It was also the top one hundred. You know, there was uh, well, it was the top one hundred in Billboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, yeah. Yeah. it. Uh, uh, anyway, it's, it's, I'm going to get into concerts. Whether I like these concerts or not, you know, I really don't get me listen. In, uh, yeah, I really don't listen. <laughs> uh, well, let me. I, I got to get myself in first. I know, I know. But uh, you know, I, I'm not there to listen to the music when you're. Okay, working. well, the show's once again. It's all about Phil right now. So. Of course it is. <laughs> I got the hat on. I went yeah. shoot. I bought this for shooting. It's a special hat for oh being gosh. in the sun. And it's good to 50, uh, how do they measure the stuff for the uh, cream that you put on? So, yeah. Can I tell you SPF. this, Phil? It's an old man hat. Yeah. <laughs> but it, I didn't uh, burn my ears or my neck <laughs> or my forehead. So well, I was very happy. You need a redneck to go to a country concert there, yeah. Phil. Yeah, well, I don't need the you skin cancer. I just put a picture there, of the deplorable buddy. choir on the side there. You know, that's, that's <laughs> the other thing I asked the doctor today. I said, can you check these sunspots? And uh, they're not cancerous. You know, he says they're just sunspots. Okay. So, uh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. You yeah, know, I'm, I'm so yeah. upset by all this. I might not even go to the the doctor tomorrow. I might just Why not? stiff the whole thing. I don't know. I just, then you'll really be screwed. Yeah. What do you mean? Why would I really be screwed? Because you'll just sit there and worry some more. Just yeah. go and get it over with. Yeah. yeah, weren't you the guy that said that you were sort of paralyzed by, uh, you know, when you'd wake up in the morning from... from I was terrified, this, literally terrified. terrified. I was, uh, yeah. This thing has completely terrorized me. You, you know? just yeah, got to deal need, with it. You just need to go yeah. and get your answers. Alex, just yeah. go for it. Yeah. Go. Uh, Patrick? All right. The scariest thing that happened for me, and I know this is close to Kevin's heart, um, and I'm not belittling ALS in any way, Kevin, so just, you know, um, when I started becoming paralyzed before the surgery that I had, I had pain in my hip, and I started losing the ability to walk, and every morning it got worse, and I had read up on ALS, just like you did, Alec, where you went online. Yeah. I had read up on ALS. And ALS starts from the feet up. And what I had to do 
I had to muster up all the courage that I had. I went to my doctor and I asked a question that scared the shit out of me. Mm -hmm. I asked him, I said, do you think that I have ALS? And he agreed that a lot of my symptoms were similar. He said, but you do not because of X, Y, Z, you know, and all these other things. But it took me a long time to get them to ask that because that's something that I feared because when you have ALS, you're fucked. Yeah. And I was relieved that I didn't have it. So then, even though this other shit was bad, it, it was at least an answer. So for you skipping tomorrow, go get it done, and you're gonna, you're either gonna hear what you wanna hear or not, but you'll have information, mm -hmm. and you can move forward. And if you don't, you're gonna be stuck. And you need to move forward. I'm sure Jeff has experienced the same shit where even though he'd been through, I yeah, remember, no. you don't want to go back. You don't want to deal with things, but you have to. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, and thing. he had toes falling off, like uh, you know, like grapes coming off oh. of a uh, of vine. And hey, Kevin. Kevin, uh, how do they discover if you have ALS? Is it a, a blood uh, test or uh, how it's do they? A, it's a whole series of tests. And, and I'll tell you, thanks, Patrick. I appreciate that. The, the, the thing with ALS is it takes a whole bunch of different tests. It's chromosome tests. It's all kinds of tests. And I, mm -hmm. I know Ray's experienced that as well. Oh, yeah. um, but my friend just passed away a couple of weeks ago from it. And he... Uh, you talk about no control, Alex. Mm -hmm. You talk about no control. Yeah. It it's the worst thing in the frickin' world. I watched him go through it for the last two years, and to watch a guy go from a big strong truck driver to not even be able when he could went for him to say okay when I saw him in June was this. Yeah. I was gonna tell you. That's all he could do. He couldn't mm. talk. He lost his legs. He kept falling over. He could barely move his arms. He kept, horrible. It was just. It was just horrible. Uh, how did they? How did he horrible. breathe? Was he on a assisted he breathing apparatus? He was just getting to that point. He was using a a, a BiPAP machine. Mm -hmm. And when I went up there to see him in June, we sat on the bed, and the only time he could get up was to go get his suction machine and suck all the spit out because he couldn't swallow. You choke. That's how you die. Yeah, they they yeah. die by their lungs. My uncle had that. That was one of the hardest tests where they had to diagnose him. You know where it started for my uncle? It was in his. I will never forget it. It was like around Thanksgiving. I went to his house in Jersey, and his finger was like bent. He couldn't pick his forks up. Could that and, have been an arthritis, that, rheumatoid no, arthritis? That was the that was the start of the. The you know what's, what's it goes. It, it goes. It, it goes from one person to another. It doesn't have any rhyme or reason to how it does it. What's People will. Their legs will work forever. Their hands will work, and then they'll stop. Then their I, legs I will saying, work, and then they'll stop. It he goes, thought it was arthritis. But it's he a didn't. random disease. Yeah. It's easily misdiagnosed too. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it is. It, it, yeah. You know, I, I I've been wondering, you know, because I'm I for, I'm forgetting things and and so forth, mm -hmm. and so I, you know I, I'm a little worried. Maybe I'm going to be susceptible to Alzheimer's, or even dementia. We can and, only hope. Uh, they have they have a chromosome test that uh, mm -hmm. I guess there, there's some way for them to to predict whether you're going to whether you're going to have that or not. And I haven't come to the. I wouldn't take it, Phil. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I haven't decided if I would take it. Uh, but, you know, do I really want to know, you know, uh, a friend of mine, a guy who, is, uh, who comes in, a salesman that, uh, that used to work for me, uh, his wife has Alzheimer's now. And, you know, she can't, she spends her day in a chair uh, and her night on the sofa next to the chair. She can't remember things 10 minutes uh, uh, later. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, and it's killing him. He says, hey, I don't know. I can't, I can't take it. He, does, yeah. he doesn't want to. You know, he doesn't want to go home. He he had retired, and then said he took his job back because he just couldn't couldn't be at home. Yeah, caretakers you know, she, have the worst part of it. Yeah. But let's let's go back to Alex because you're talking about control. 
you have yeah. no control over it, so you might as well figure out what's going on, and and just just do it. Yeah, figure out what's it, going yeah. on and how you're going to fix it. And, and, and it's easy, it's it. easy for us to say that. Yeah, but, it is. You know, uh, it is I, easy, I have not had a the unknown yeah. is going to be worse. I have not had a a, a doctor. Um, I, uh, you know, I had, as I say, two doctors have chimed in on this, and both of them have said, "Don't even worry. Even if he has the yeah, cancer, it's, it's, it's no big deal." You're already two out of three. You're you're, you're ahead of the game right there. Y yeah, not yeah. They 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 both said. In fact, uh, this doctor that Shaggy had said. Uh, a six, seven, nothing. He said that's not, See, they, you know, that's not a big deal. He goes to the doctor's house. I, you know, you're very, I'm looking on the bright side. I think, I'm I think, I think uh, what? I'm going to cheer you up, Alex. Yeah. You're very, because I'm hearing of all these other people, you're sharp as a tack, right? Yeah, sure. Your PSA level, um, your PSA, you know, you're, come on, you could still get in and out of the house. You're not, my mother's using a walker. I mean, come on. I'm yeah. being honest. You know what? It's, it's, it's good to be nervous because everybody's nervous because, it, you know, people getting sick doesn't really have an age number to it. If you think about it, you got a lot of positives. Well, you know, I feel uh, I feel uh, kind of terrible about the fact that I even feel this way about things yeah, because so because normal. because we've got uh, we've got a whole group of people here uh, like uh, Charlie. He's missing some toes and he had uh, diabetes, and Phil's missing a prostate. And uh, 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 Jeff uh, has uh, a pacemaker in him, and uh, 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 Patrick is—he's uh, a mess. Uh, <laughs> no, Patrick's uh, Patrick's got—I mean, Patrick has the best spirit of anybody I've ever met, because if mm -hmm. I if I were in his situation, I would be the grouchiest human being on planet Earth. <laughs> then we've got Ke <laughs> there, we've got Kevin with his problems. Actually, of the of the uh, s uh, seven people that I've got on this panel tonight, four of them, five of them, have stuff worse than I could possibly have right now. You know, and, just and remember, I'm sitting here window, and I'm I got and window screen in my heart. <laughs> you know what? Three of them. You know, oh, oh, oh yeah. But all oh, I'm saying yeah, is is that in, in a way, I guess I'm kind of selfish in a way. You know, because I, I, you know, it's not selfish. Don't compare it. The C word is club. always scary. The C word is always yeah. cancer yeah. is always scary. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that isn't worth it. that isn't the part that I'm really scary about, scared about, because uh, everybody has told me if you got it, it's so curable in most cases. It, you know, that it's oh. it's not nothing to really worry about in that respect. Yes, Patrick. I have a big one tomorrow. Don't minimize your own situation and compare it to everybody else. I mean, yeah. for you, the only thing I think that at least Kevin and I are trying to drum into you is go to the doctor. Go get an answer because if you don't, you're, you're, you're armed with less information. Well, I, I, I already uh, have an answer, I mean, from one doctor. And he just said, well, we've got to do a biopsy. You know, let's go check it. And do a biopsy. But you're not yeah. satisfied. The, well, the I'm not. Doctor, I, I'm not. I'm not only not satisfied with this guy doing it. I'm not satisfied with what he's going to feel is the solution, because he's so the ready. The idea is you want to be satisfied with what you're, yeah. with what yeah. you're hearing, yeah. and you're not. Yeah, yeah. The second so, doctor I went to, I said to him this question. I said, if I was your brother mm -hmm. or your father, what course of action would you take? And he said, I'd remove the prostate because uh, you don't have a chance of it coming back. And, uh, and that was what made, uh, uh, put me over the edge to decide to remove it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, because I didn't want it to return. And uh, because if it does return, it oftentimes is much more virulent, virulent, virulent than, yeah. uh, than the original one. Yeah. So... And and I'll also also say this that just because you're sitting there thinking this right now, don't think that any one of us were not in the same position when we first got diagnosed with our first piece of shit yeah. diagnosis. Yeah. We all did the same freaking thing. Yeah. You're just lucky that you're doing it now at 79 years old. Yeah. Well, we feel lucky that you're doing it now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I oh. you know, so look at it that way. Well, you know, if if I come out, I started out, uh, when uh, I was, it, I don't know, eighty six, wherever that was. Yeah. Well, if yeah. I count, you know, if I come out of this tomorrow with him saying, 
saying let's uh, let's wait and see here and you know also i mean i'm going to tell this guy you know tomorrow probably if i like him enough uh that uh, will you be my you know my urologist i'm sure he won't say no everybody likes getting the business as it were don't, you know? don't forget to interview him don't be too eager to yeah. oh, to no. hire him uh you may want to interview others before you make your decision yeah. don't just you know you, you've got time uh, the other two doctors told you that so you know i'm just saying don't well, my, so per my personal to... doctor i said by holding this thing off this this P, uh, this uh, uh, biopsy, uh, am I, am I, is it going to cause problems? He said, no. He says, yeah, you've got all the time in the world. He says, you've, you, you, he says, I've had, I can't tell you how many people over the years in my practice who come down with prostate cancer, and only one of them was serious. Only one Indeed. of them. Yeah. The rest of them were all joking around? All of them were joking around, yeah. So, you know. That, that's the one he said he saved, right? No, no, no. That was the other doctor who said he saved oh, okay. the guy when okay. he was when he was in eight, 87. And I'm going, God, you know, by <laughs> then I, 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 I what, yeah, well, you know. I, I think you just go for it, get your answers, and, and not, not fret. Yeah. By the way, Phil, are you still peeing your pants, or is that over with now? Uh, I, I tried stopping the uh, uh, the thing that they gave me. I think it was called Santura uh -huh. uh, and or, or with Trespium. It's, uh, you know, they got so many names for these generic drugs. Yeah. But I stopped it for a while, and uh, I just started it again, and that, that um, relaxes the bladder. Uh, so by taking that daily... Uh, it's it's not an issue. It's not an issue. So you don't pee your pants or anything anymore. No, no. Yeah. And and if I did it when I wasn't taking it, it was just a dribble. You yeah. know, just yeah. just. You gotta take it when you're done. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's not that. It's before you're done. You know, it's you know all of a sudden you got you know you turn your head, you cough, you you if you fart, God forbid. <laughs> I hate it when you fart. Yeah, well, you know, like I've I've learned, don't don't do it because you may pee. <laughs> but uh, but yeah. with the trespium, yeah, that's what a that's what a, a puffart is, a puffart. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah, yeah but with, with this little san santorum or santura, I don't know what they call. Uh, it, it's it hasn't been a problem, and it's the same kind of drug that they give women after pregnancy because they tend to have. Oh, you too. Right. Uh, oh, really? You take it too, uh, Patrick? I I take something different and call it Vesicare. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, Get a generic yet? I get to pay the full fucking price, but it's for um, relaxing bladder spasms. Yeah. Because otherwise, because I can't tell when I have a full bladder or not, um, I need to have my bladder relaxed so that when I'm transferring or whatever, and I haven't taken a leak in a couple mm -hmm. hours, yeah. that have a good chance of not pissing my pants. Can't they put a meter on your chair that you can plug in to see, yeah. by, you know, by how full way, it is? By, by, by the way, you may not have noticed, but Ray... Like a fuel gauge? Ray, <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. Ray has yeah. blurred out his background. Yes, yeah. I did yeah. notice. And you know what? You know what? You know what? You, you know what I, you know, when you lean back too far, you blur it out, too. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> unblur it. Yeah. 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 It, it's... I, I don't. I, you know something. I don't have that um, uh, that feature. particular feature. In, in, no. Yeah. I don't either. Really. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know why. And yet, you know, because I'd I'd like to say, uh, well, you know, I don't have that particular uh, feature. Yeah. If uh, I go down to the more options, you got start recording, turn subtitles on, turn incoming off on incoming video, hold yeah. call at yeah. audio and video settings. Yeah. Uh, uh, but no, uh, it, it should be no under audio background. video settings, and I don't have blur background. But, but if I go over to Marjorie's computer, which is just it's a mini Mac over there, uh, yeah. she has it on hers. And, oh, well, and, and also, if I go to the other mini Mac and, and go for it, uh, it isn't on that one. Oh. So I, I don't know why one Skype has it and another Skype doesn't have it. You have three mini Macs. Well, I guess one of them is just doing the network. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, 
Do you even have I, a screen I, on? I actually have two Mini Macs I'm using, and I have a third Mini Mac uh, in a drawer somewhere in case either of these go out. I yeah. see. So. Well, uh, mine, I just click right click on my photo on and right click on my picture and it, and it gives me the option well let me see here what happened? i'm on a pc i right uh -huh. click on it well, let me and let me see says, here I, I i right clicking on my picture doesn't do anything no it just uh, says turn off video webcam what webcam oh, it yeah. is whatever yeah uh, i wonder, I wonder I if that's to do with your type of camera it could be it could be that it, it, it well no but no you yeah. see it can't be and i'll tell you why Oh look, Kevin's now blurred. Yeah, uh, I mm -hmm. use I use two fingers on my trackpad, and I have tells me to turn video off. Uh, I have a webcam. Yeah, yeah, 920, yeah. But what I'm saying is, I can is, mute the microphone. That's it, it. The camera in Marjorie's uh, uh, machine is exactly the same camera I'm using for Skype here, so oh, it, ha it doesn't have anything to do with the camera. Oh weird. I, I, I touched my photo a couple times, and it got much bigger. What happened? <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, the, uh, there's like an, an expansion arrow, mm -hmm. and so when I clicked on it, uh, well, that time it didn't do anything. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I can't seem to make it smaller either. Oh no! You, yeah. you know. Well, anyway, mm -hmm. enough with, enough with that. Boy, what a boring oh, yeah, show we're ta we're talking about. My fears. <laughs> you know, I'm just so upset by this. I just. Well, you know. Um, I was watching the debates tonight. Well, oh, here we and, go. And uh, the guy from Washington State, Inslee, mm -hmm. if he said, I'm proud, 20 times, he said it 200 times. And, uh, uh, you know, they were going back and forth. They were trying to beat up Biden. Uh, he, he well, I think he's weathered well, that storm. To, 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 well, I think, well, I think uh, Andrew Yang must have said he was going to pay everybody every question they, they asked. Yeah, <laughs> Andrew Yang is making a mistake. Because I know. Every, every, every question no, 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 he asked, no, no. I, I asked him about immigration. Well, I'm going to pay everybody pay money. So. <laughs> well, you see, the thing is, Andrew Yang has a lot more about well, him he, than $1,000. Well, he, he, he sure he, as heck he, had a lot what? of crowd there. Well, he's, yeah. he's the Oprah candidate. Uh, because he's going, that. you get a thousand dollars, and you get a thousand dollars, and you get a thousand dollars. The thing, the thing about Andrew Yang is, I saw him on an interview with uh, Ben Shapiro, and uh, Andrew Yang had a yeah, lot to him. say, and he was a very. Who's he Ben had, Shapiro? He was, he's a uh, uh, he's got a uh, podcast and some yeah. TV shows. He's a Jewish. Uh, uh, pundit. Oh, with a name uh, like player. like Shapiro, yeah. he would have to be Jewish. Yeah. Well, anyway, he's, he's I, you know I like him. Uh, so, but anyway, Andrew Yang in that conversation had a lot of depth. He he, uh, he was impressive. Uh, I think even Ray sh uh, saw that. I did. And, yeah. Yeah. He, I told he does him. have some interesting stuff to say. It's just a matter but, of whether it's real or not. He he he. he he claims that he's a mathematician he is. with, uh, you know, with uh, a lot of answers. But, but you see, the thing is, he, he was going, he was, he was just being, he was on the surface with this $1,000. He has so much more behind that. Uh, that uh, well, you know, right I about he, he's right about a lot of jobs being replaced by animation. And, that's for sure. Yeah. No, I need to say, like Phil and I saw saw this interview. He has so much substance. Yes. But he is unable. I, I didn't watch. I didn't watch the debates. But I'm guessing. First of all, I know there's no way that he could explain his policies on it in a debate. Right. It would yeah. be impossible. I mean, this guy has this stuff so thought out. I was thoroughly impressed. As was Phil. Yeah, um, but on, in a debate format, you're never going to find out about it. No, because that's all he did was answer with a thousand dollars. Well, that's yeah. because no, his I, campaign and, people probably told him to do that. But you know, he, no. yeah, uh, I don't even know if it's campaign people. I think maybe he he's not accustomed to be in front of uh, uh, you know th uh, hundred million people. Probably uh, not. Uh, no, yeah, it, and, did, it didn't look like it at all. And and his it's really and they, impressive. Interview. Yeah, and they had feedback problems with the microphones, especially on his every yeah. week. Every yeah. time he's on, there's something wrong with his mic. Yeah, last time it didn't work. This time he had feedback. No, let me uh, let me let me um, uh, ask you there this. Were some, uh, uh, they, at, they pulled out some hecklers too. Yeah, no, no. What yeah. were what were they yelling? I, that's I couldn't what I was understand. Ask you. 
Huh? Yeah, I, I couldn't, couldn't understand what they were saying. I mean, no, me were they pro-Trump people or were they just I, I don't think so. anti-Biden people or I don't know, but it came up when they were talking about what was it immigration and, and the insurance thing. It I was think Corey Corey Booker uh, yeah. had the first group of protesters, and, and then, then Biden I think had some. Biden, and they didn't do it to anyone else. Maybe they got him out of there. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. they did. If, if, Charlie, you heard it. Did you hear no, what they? I didn't watch the oh, you didn't watch it. Okay. I heard it, and I couldn't tell you what they were saying. Matter of fact, I was thinking that you were listening to it. And I was going to write you and ask you what the hell are they saying. I, I was trying to figure it out myself, but they were just. It was like. Blah, 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 blah. You I'm know? sure the. I'm sure the news has said who they were. Uh, what they were saying. Well, well, I let me, let me to the see here. Spin room or whatever. L it is. I'll go to Drudge. He 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 found it. <laughs> yeah. He's That's the truth. They'll give you some shit. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Biden stumbles over words and stats. He's running. For, eh. Oh, protesters interrupt debate. Okay. Let's mm -hmm. see here. Uh, protesters hit democratic debate. I can't breathe. Chance uh, interrupt uh, NYC. That had hair. to do with the Bill, guy in New York. Bill de Blasio yeah. over demands to fire a cop. Okay. Uh, two different sets of protesters were ejected. One woman held a sign, stop all deportations on day one. Uh, a group of five were removed when they demanded Bill de Blasio fire uh, the cop. Um, and uh, let's see here. Uh, who, was, who, was, who was the other one? Didn't say who the other ones were, but that's what huh. they were. They were over. I think there was two, at least when I was listening. There was I, I didn't hear the one about de Blasio, though. Uh, yeah. No, I didn't either. No, actually, de Blasio, even though I hate his guts for being a commie, an admitted commie, uh, he, he, he did he de Blasio did <laughs> admits to being a communist. Yeah, well, he did pretty good. Wow. No, wait a minute. How did how, how you please, please were you, were you explain? Hey, better red than dead, huh? Well, uh, explain <laughs> yourself, shit. Bill. How is de Blasio, I, I never heard him say he was a communist. Yeah, yeah. It uh, uh, definitely. He said that uh, he's uh, he's a communist. No, he uh, did it, never. He said, I am a communist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Said oh, they cool. probably yeah. Said so yeah, that's a way to get. Yeah, that's a, that's a way to yeah. run for president. Say you're a communist. Come on, Phil. Yeah. Well, that's what they say about him. Uh, no, wait anyway. a minute. Who is they? Uh, I, Drudge. You're gonna have you get paid the big money on this show. You look it up. No, who's they? <laughs> no, you're oh, the. Oh, he you, you quoted made... communist terrorist Che Che Che, che, che Guevara. Guevara. He quoted him okay. on Thursday while speaking during a union rally in Miami International Airport. What did he yeah. quote him? What quote did he? He said, uh, "De Blasio dropped K's most famous quote as he joined workers who walked off the job in protest of poor conditions and compensation." Um, the phrase, which translates roughly to ever on to victory was a mantra for Guevara who became one of Castro's top lieutenants. Yeah. So uh, he and, and there are many other examples of his uh Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, how about the new uh, how about the new name uh, Moscow Mitch? I like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I saw the mimes, meme, mimes, what do they call memes. 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 memes uh where they got Mitch McConnell dressed up like a uh, a Russian uh, general. Mm -hmm. I think uh, they're great. I think Moscow Mitch is great. The best thing that I heard about these memes is that uh, one guy who designed the meme sued somebody who used it for $15,000 and won. Uh, whatever. Yeah. You know, maybe it'll clean up Facebook a little bit if you have to use your own original material. You know? Wow. Yeah. I never posted. I think, I think that Moscow isn't Mitch is going to stick, though. Uh, you know, yeah. if, if if he's going to run around saying Sleepy Joe and lock her up matter. and all that crap, maybe Moscow Mitch will. Yeah, I don't think it'll stick. Stick. It's sticking already. Yeah. yeah. Here's it in the debate too. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, they they were. <laughs> also, do you think that Harris uh, didn't do as well this time? Well, uh, and kind of got beat no, up by kinda, Gillibrand. They kind of, they kind of, they kind of, they kind of, uh, they kind of uh, 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 jumped on her. I mean, they, they were, did, yeah. yeah they well, were. and I've come to the conclusion, just like uh, Patrick, Tulsi Gabbard is good enough to be a Fox News commentator. That's how yeah. good looking. Oh, she oh is. Tulsi Gabbard is the uh, is the candidate yep. I would want to fuck. Yeah. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah.
you know, oh, yeah. at Jesus. first I didn't think her complexion was that good, but you know what? Whatever the camera angle was she, on her tonight, she's a, she was great. I have a name for her. She's a kilf. A kilf? The <laughs> candidate I'd like to fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or is it a silk? She is. Yeah. It, but she you know looking. what happens with my wife, though, and this this she is good looking. looking. This this really gets me about my wife. Whenever you see like, uh, uh what's her name? Tulsi. What's her last Gabbard. name? Gabbert. Tulsi Gabbert. Gabbert. Uh, you know, and and you see her on screen, rather than say I like her politics, right? She goes. Yeah. She has bad skin. She does have bad skin. <laughs> she does have bad skin, <laughs> but tonight. She looked great. Yeah. Oh, a lot of Bondo on yeah. yeah. Well, maybe, yeah, maybe some makeup. Uh, she has some she serious has bad acne. Skin because of her military service. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, uh, if that's how my wife military. judges people. Like, uh, 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 who is it? Oh, uh, was it Marianne Williams in the last night? She said one of her eyebrows was too high. And I'm going to, <laughs> you know, this is now how we elect people in America because their eye, one eyebrow is too high. You know. Marianne Williams, uh, you know, she'll she'll pray and uh, and and yoga herself into the, the position. I like uh, her. She's entertaining as hell. Yeah, you know, uh, they they uh, some a couple of them called a couple of them liars. I think one uh, uh, two of them uh, called Harris a liar, or that she was lying about uh, her health plan, and. Uh, uh, Williamson uh, was saying that you know you guys are dream are in dreamland and it's going to be a very black uh, day yeah. for the Democrats. Well, she uh, she um, um, uh, and she wasn't talking about getting with, the black vote with, with, with Kathleen Harris t uh, tonight. Uh, uh, excuse me, what's her name? Uh, Harris. Uh, 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 Kamala uh, Harris. Kamala. Kamala, Kamala Harris so. with Kamala Harris. Uh, they were all kind of lined up to go after her because she they kind of consider her a front runner so they were yeah. trying to to blunt her and she held up for herself pretty well you know until the end she started breaking down you could see that uh she wasn't you know she she, it, she didn't go into that phony thing about her being bust and 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 starting to cry you know almost almost having crocodile tears uh but she was close uh, tonight, when uh, when they challenged her, she she was yeah, caught they off went guard. Yeah, record and everything. Yeah. Like. Oh yeah, that big. How, how do you think and Biden? You how, the, I, I didn't see much of it, but how do you think Biden held up tonight? Uh, he, he if if you go from zero to ten, he was a good six and a half. Oh, that's my uh, that's my PSA. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, Bi Biden didn't get trounced, uh, but you know he he wasn't that strong. Uh, yeah. He. Was okay. What do you, what'd you, what'd you, th what'd you think, Kevin? Out. How did how did Biden do tonight? I agree. Kevin, what? I agree with what oh. uh, Bill just said. I, I think I think that's what I heard from him. Yeah. He was better than I expected, but not that one hundred percent. The question here is, and it, it it is always my big question is, which. Is there a Democrat? And don't don't you answer, Phil, because we know what you're going to say. Uh, is there a Democrat who can beat Trump? Who's the best qualified to beat Trump? I mean, that has has the can't be what qualified or is or, or can forget beat about Trump qualified. Basically. I'm talking about able to get into the ring and score. Okay, win the win the election. Are I any of these so. people? I didn't ask you, Phil. Yeah. I said, I'm, except for Phil, because we know what you're going to say. Are there any of these people who you think really has the power to go after Trump? Bernie. Nah. Nah. I, I, I don't know. I thought, uh, I thought Booker stood out pretty good tonight. Booker very good tonight. Yeah, yeah, he didn't oh, do bad. He might, he might be able to go toe to toe to him with him. Yeah, he you don't think Bernie can? Stick, no, absolutely pretty, not. Why? Phil, one... I thought that Alex told you to keep quiet. Yeah, keep quiet, one... Phil. <laughs> keep <laughs> quiet, <laughs> Phil, because Phil. keep quiet because we know what you're going to say. You know, I'm I'm asking I the people, Bennett. I'm asking the people here who have a invest, investment in. Which Democrat is going to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Trump? 
And I know you're going to say none of them, so let's no, not wait, even, wait, even, wait you minute, know, Phil. Don't shh, 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 shh. There was a guy, Bennett, uh, I think he's a congressman. Oh, oh you know, uh, Phil, we're, you're not supposed to be talking. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll mute myself. <laughs> Come on, man. Play by the rules, yo. Yeah. There he goes, yeah. Now you can talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, my question is, uh, it, 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 which one of these people is capable of, of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Trump? Is well, Biden... Kamala Harris can, can fight. Yeah. Kamala Harris can Thanks fight. Yeah, how about, how, about, uh, um, how about Biden? Well, just because of his old, he's old school. So, I mean, just because of who he is, maybe. But I don't think he can. Do you think he's Trump maybe capable of winning because he, the working man seems to like him? You know? Yeah, I think that's yeah, the whole middle of the country like him. So, I mean, he's got a big advantage just because of his back. And is he in Pennsylvania? Maybe he can win that state because didn't Trump win Pennsylvania? Yeah. 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 But that uh, could be a political strategy. Well, it's Maybe. a question of which one of these people. For, uh, I, I'm, you know, like, I don't like Biden that much, okay? But I still have to say which one of these guys, which one of these people is capable of beating Trump? And that's, that's the thing. Is that there's so. a there's a yeah. thing about debating Trump and how he can win the election. There's a, two different things. Yeah. Debating Trump is going to be a, a an, another story. I yeah. Mean, that's the way I look at it. Is you know when you see those when you see those two people, whoever's going to be debating Trump and going against Trump is going to be a different story than you know when people go out to vote for a certain person, because yeah. Trump is going to try and stumble. You know. St Stump anybody that goes against him. Well, Kamala Harris. There, yeah, but what I'm saying is, 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 be stumbling it, it, the whole is time who itself. can go toe to toe Harris, with Trump? Wait a minute. Mean, not yeah. only Harrison, in the debate. Harris might be able to. Yeah. Maybe Booker. I think Buttigieg could. And I think yeah, Buttigieg, Buttigieg probably could too. Yeah. Um, because it seems like nothing, nothing uh, really spooks that guy. He's no. falling apart like a cheap suit. No, he's not. He's, he's, he's just hey, trying to hold out Phil, until, Phil, until you're, September. Phil, you're, you're entering into our politics. What are you doing? <laughs> you know, go you talk, know go this, is a, this is a bunch of Democrats talking about who they want to see, who, who would be the be best served. Even, even Patrick hasn't said a word because he knows he's a Republican, and this is not his fight. You know, it's not his discussion. We Americans. Huh? We're Americans. We didn't have to. Cr we didn't crawl over the wall. But he didn't even Patrick roll over the talk. wall. We don't let you talk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I mean, oh. I. I just. I, I. don't know that there is really a stealth candidate there. I mean, when I. The minute I saw Obama years ago, I said he's the stealth candidate. You know. Yeah. Uh, Manchurian uh, candidate. Uh, uh, oh Jesus, <laughs> Phil! Stop it. You're getting, you're getting boring with that shit. Twice. See, uh, that's why I think the the, the the Buttigieg has got the same kind of demeanor that that Obama had. Yeah. He he can stand up, you know, and kind of keep an even keel. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, you had a star in Obama. I don't know if we have that here. No, yeah. I don't think we have. And I wish yet, anyway. I, I wish a lot of these other guys would get out of the way and quit yes. taking up stage space. So who would it be then if we have we don't have a star? There's no star. Well, I don't think we know yet. Uh, I guess Oprah, right? Patrick. Patrick. Oprah, man. I was just gonna say, what your side needs is our side <laughs> to bring somebody on and say, here's our candidate, because that's pretty much what she did with Obama, and I don't know if it if it's Oprah to do it or who it is, but you need. A celebrity to to bless that candidate yeah. for the rest of, of the country to really take notice because I, I mean I haven't watched any of the debate but I'm guessing there are some qualified people on there that are not able to get their message out because they're only getting two yeah. minutes three minutes here and there yep. but if they were to go on if Oprah still had her show and you know she had them and she yeah. Yeah. Alex Bennett could do it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's it, pretty much. Uh, when the music came in, all of a sudden, it dumped uh, Patrick. I don't know why. But uh, anyway, it, 
Take a dump, Patrick. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> I, I want to thank Charlie for being here. I want to thank Phil with that dumb, stupid old man hat. Uh, I want to thank uh, Jeff. I want to thank Patrick. I want to thank Kevin. I want to thank give me a break, Bennett, uh, Tony, and uh, I want to thank Ray. Boy, that's the whole bunch of them, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, if they would, I'd like them to all wave uh, a big goodbye, and I will wave back to them, okay? There they go. Okay, that's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, and uh, I'll uh, be back again, hopefully tomorrow night, unless I uh, am given such bad news tomorrow that I get uh, uh, just depressed and, you know, can't go by the old axiom the show must go on okay anyway uh coming up next is the intersection that's with jack bishop and uh then tomorrow night i'll be back on again hopefully at uh, 10 o'clock eastern daylight time okay that's it that's all she wrote see you tomorrow night at 10 same time same station in life in the meantime if you see her tell her i love her okay bye bye everybody <laughs>